Well, my wife and I like a good cup of coffee, and uh, a couple of years ago uh, we uh, splurged a little bit and got a higher-end coffee machine, and like most coffee machines, it comes with a nice little plastic scoop. That worked fine, and I looked at it one day and said, hell, I'm a wood turner. You know, what, why, why shouldn't I make my own wooden scoop? So I made a two-piece wooden scoop. It was pretty easy. Made something like these, just did some end turning uh, with a little cylinder, then turned a, a handle, drilled a hole through the side of the cup, and stuck the handle in and glued it. And that did okay, but then I realized this cup is pretty thin, and the only glue point here is about the 16th of an inch thickness of the wall. So that's not going to last very long. So then I made one with, with a little ring. You can see that on the, uh, to make it a little bit thicker. And then I didn't quite drill all the way through, and I liked that a little bit better. But it was still a two-piece scoop. And you can go ahead and pass these around. <coughs> so I wanted to make a, a, just a one-piece scoop, and I've seen this before. Uh, and how do you, you do that? And so I checked YouTube and uh, the Internet, and everybody's making a jig to hold these things. Well, I have so doggone many jigs laying around my uh, shop, you know, that I've used once, and, and they're a pain in the neck to make if you're only going to make a few, you know, little things. And uh, a few weeks ago, I was on vacation, and in the middle of the night, I kept on thinking about a doggone coffee scoop while I'm on vacation in Europe. And I worked out the whole process at night in my mind how to make these things. And then when I came home, I just had to work out the actual process and the dimensions and how to make it. And I came up with the idea that if you put a tenon on the bottom of the cup, your narrow jaw chucks can hold this and you don't need a jig. And this will hold the whole thing. And just to show you the versatility, you don't need to just make a coffee scoop. I turned this out this morning. You can make a bigger cup, and you're not really not limited any size. Just put a, a bigger tannin on the bottom and, and turn it with a bigger uh, uh, chuck. And so the whole process will work like that. What I did is figure out the size of the scoop that I want and draw a little tannin on the bottom, and then I drew a circle around it and came up that I needed about a three-inch circle of wood around this in order to incorporate the tenon along with the coffee cup. And then I worked out the whole process where you can turn the tenon away. So I made the tenon, put, put a circle on it, and then uh, again worked through the process to try to get that. There we go. There's the uh, camera. And a, about a three-inch scoop. <coughs> so I first started off with about a two-and-a-half-inch cylinder and then decided I need a little bit more room and ended up with a three-inch diameter cylinder that's about seven inches long. <clears throat> Try to keep my club shirt from getting too dirty. <clears throat> and let's see. So this is about three inches in diameter, and so I'm going to draw down here three inches from the end because I'm going to turn a sphere. So we'll go through that process. <clears throat> and safety, of course. I usually wear my dust mask there, but you wouldn't be able to hear me if I wore my dust mask here. Um, so do use a face mask. When I've turned these from some logs, I have been hit in my face mask multiple times by bark or even by chips of wood. There was just a weakness there, and it flew off and really smacked and scared me. But luckily, I had this thing on, so no harm, no foul. Now, for those of you who haven't used a thin parting tool, You can't just put it straight in. You have to wiggle it. And this needs to be dropped down a little bit. So you aim up and you aim down. That gives it room. If you just put it straight in, it will grab. And you go in so you leave something about an inch, three quarters of an inch, just to start off the stem. <clears throat> and 
So now here I'm going to turn this part away. All right. You've seen people turn things away, so we'll save a little bit of time by going up to this. Now it's really helpful if you haven't used your tools right-handed and left-handed to learn how to turn ambidextrously. It really makes it a lot easier to be able to switch and do that. I'm using a stab center, so that's why it's slipping a little bit. I found if you use the spur drive, when you get down here some woods, it will cause it to split. So that's why I switched to the stab. Okay. Now at this point I want to turn a sphere, so the easiest way i found to make a sphere is to make three lines, one right in the center. And then I'm going to divide each one of these into about a third. So about halfway between the line and the end. And this doesn't need to be that accurate. Well, a couple of years ago, I even bought one of these expensive sphere turning jigs because I couldn't turn a sphere very well. But I found that by, that by doing it in thirds, it makes it a lot easier to turn it. So the first cut that I make is here on the corner. I just make like a 45 degree cut. Now your goal is to aim right for the end. You don't want to make a long tenon on this end because the length is the same uh, uh, length as the diameter. So to turn a sphere, you start off in the center and you want to aim for the end. Now when you get to the center, you just you don't want to touch the center line and you want to barely touch the wood and then gradually make that sphere. And now you do the same thing on the other side. And again, I'm switching hands. And I keep my eye down here where I believe the imaginary center would be so that I can gradually curve it down to that imaginary center. And again, I'm near the center line, so I barely want to touch the wood at this point.
switching hands again. Alrighty, so now I have my lollipop shaped sphere. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Okay, now at this point, what I need to do is to find the center. If you don't you find the center, then let's see, then you end up, there we go, something with sort of like a chipmunk cheek over here that's off center. There we go. Uh, so, the, so it's a little bit off center. Now you can fix that up with a sander or hand grinder, so, so you can salvage this, but that's not what I intended to do. So to find the center, it's easy to sort of figure out the center looking on the stem because it's narrow, so I'll just eyeball it and make a line down there. And then here's the center point, and what I'm trying to do is to eyeball this line Let's see, down here with this center piece and just gradually draw this, try to keep from going off to either side, which is easy to do on a sphere. And that looks pretty straight. Now the more difficult part is you want to make one on the exact opposite side. So here's the line and I'm coming down there make a line here in the center and now come across and hopefully that will line up. Uh, I don't know if it's dark enough, let's see. You know, if you come in a little bit closer maybe you could see that. So there's the lines and here's where it makes the center point here and the center on the other side. At this point, I want to make like just a little point just to, to hold my ends. Do not put the point in with your hand like this unless you want to put a hole in your hand. Just something so that the drive has something to grab onto. Okay. Now one of these ends is going to be the tenon and the opposite end is going to be the hole in the scoop. I want to make sure you have clearance of this handle swinging around. Okay. 